Sleep hygiene refers to a general set of common sense recommendations that support healthy sleep. So this includes things like um, get daily exercise, uh, keep a regular sleep-wake schedule, that is get up and go to bed at about the same time every day, uh, don't drink excessive amounts of coffee or excessive amounts of alcohol in the evening. Um, recommendations like this are important and they're necessary for good sleep, but research has found that they're insufficient. People need more than just information about good sleep. Well, it's an interesting question regarding the number of hours of sleep we should get. In fact, it's the most common question people ask me. Um, unfortunately, honing in on the number is misleading. It's a little bit like asking somebody, how many calories of food should I eat every day? And of course, the answer to that would vary depending on your size, your age, your weight, and so on. And the same is true for the number of hours of sleep we should get. It's not a one-size-fits-all proposition. You know you're getting enough sleep. You know you're getting quality sleep, basically if your energy is sustained through the day. Sleeping pills, uh, sleeping pills, of course, are very controversial. Uh, I wouldn't say that they're never useful, but I think that they are seldom useful, uh, possibly during a medical crisis or a personal crisis for a few nights. By and large, the data shows that sleeping pills don't work well. They often lead to dependence. They can undermine a person's individual sort of personal efficacy, their ability to fall asleep. And there's been some data suggesting that in the long run, sleeping pills actually have a very detrimental effect on our health. Of course, people can get over dependency on sleeping pills. Uh, it, it, it often takes the help of a professional and involves a process of slowly weaning off the sleeping pills. In my work, I tend to use natural substances like valerian, hops, melatonin to build a bridge away from the sleeping pill so people can get off them. And also, of course, we, we rely on a lot of psychological or what we call cognitive behavioral techniques, which work better than sleeping pills and their positive effect is longer lasting. Melatonin is, is really a fascinating neurochemical. It's very old from a primordial evolutionary perspective. It exists in all living things and even plants and basically it functions to communicate to the brain and to the body that it's gotten dark outside. So it, it, it triggers a shift, uh, a very complex biological shift uh, into what I would call night consciousness, a lot of changes in the brain and the body. Melatonin also supports our falling to sleep. Melatonin levels rise through the night as they get higher and higher. We spend more time dreaming. Uh, I, I've been concerned for years that as a culture, we're deficient in melatonin. Most of us are significantly overexposed to light at night, and light at night suppresses melatonin. There's actually a very strong relationship between insomnia and depression. We've known this for years. We used to think that insomnia was a characteristic symptom of depression. What we know today is that if people experience insomnia off and on for about a year, it dramatically increases their risk for depression. It looks like sleep loss over a long period of time will cause depression. And then, of course, the depression makes it more difficult to sleep and we have a vicious cycle. When an an individual is dealing with depression, it's always critical to simultaneously address their sleep concerns. Uh, the short answer to the question about bedtime routine is that we have to wind down. We really need to downshift, to shift gears from waking active consciousness when the world is lit up during the daytime into more of a receptive, quiet night consciousness. A, a lot of people unthinkingly 
import waking ways of being into the night. It's as if they bring the waking world into their bed and their bedroom. And, and this is a, a, a real key factor in sleeplessness for lots of people. So it's about winding down. That might include uh, a, a warm bath, uh, might include some journaling, uh, slowing down, dimming the lights at night, possibly some meditation. It, it varies from person to person, but whatever allows an individual to slow and to settle.